Hi guys and welcome back to Topic Tuesday. This is episode 16. If you've been here before and watched any of the previous episodes, then thank you so much. Your support is much appreciated. And if you haven't and you're new here, welcome. I'm so excited to have two very special people on the couch with me today. We've got Jay. <laughs> and Brooklyn. Um, Brooklyn is Jay's fiance, and we are here to talk all things kind of business, life, running a successful streetwear brand, and just having a really good chat. Now, I'm going to be honest because I can't yeah. not tell you what's happened because <laughs> it's just not going to make sense. So, we actually already once filmed this podcast earlier in the week, and it was unreal. We had such a good chat, but unfortunately, behind us, there was like site demolition going on. The whole building was shaking. shaking. Like World War II. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. so was loud. Bad. We were all screaming over the microphone, yeah. like sat here juddering. <laughs> and we thought like Carl, our amazing production guy, tried his best to make it work. But unfortunately, there was just one aspect that we weren't happy with. And we were all a bit of perfectionists, aren't we? We yeah. are. So we were like, no, we're going to have to do this again. So if you hear me like referring back to, oh, in the week when we filmed the episode, because Jay and Brooklyn did, said some really good stuff. I want to make sure that's in this one too. So if you hear me referring to that, it's because we've already done we it. We have filmed But we're before. doing it again, <laughs> yeah. which we're all cool with. We all made that Take decision. Take two. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so we're going to start a bit different because... I need to switch up a little bit. So we're going to start with a bit of Mr. and Mrs. I already Ooh, said that you guys are yeah. fian- Wait, do you say like fiancés? Fiance. Do you I, say that? Sometimes uh, we yeah. still, I'm kind of saying partner. Okay. Because yeah. so if you always used to say partner, what is Jay? But it's fiancé. Fiancé is like, it's a bit, it's like a long word. I can't He's explain. He's the fiance. Like, is that actually legit? Fiance. No. Oh. So if you're Just, the fiancé, what's Jay? He's still the fiancé. It's just spelt different on paper. It's so bougie. I love it. Yeah. It must be a French word. It must be a French yeah, word. Yeah, I don't actually fiance. know what we say. It just depends on it. Like, you, you are the fiance as well. Yeah. It's That's just nice. more, it's we're more basically, a bit feminine. At this yeah. point, we're basically married. Yeah. <laughs> right. As well. But yeah. actually referring back to last week, we, we haven't done wedding plans yet, have we? No. Go on, give no. us a little bit. Give us a little bit of an update before we get into on, it. Man. Right. Everything is on a backlog, I think, from like, covid so in order to get the venue that you want you're having to wait at least two years minimum for Mm -hmm. the date Mm -hmm. so we went and saw one that we really liked and they were like yeah there's no availability until 2026 2026 so we're kind of like not just like limiting ourselves to that we're going to get out there elsewhere yeah Yeah. look elsewhere just to see if we can get one sooner but Mm -hmm. at the moment we're having no luck no luck yeah. It's got to be right though, hasn't it? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Especially your, I hate to think yours like the, I just can't even begin to think. <laughs> well, it's what all her, like, like, that's what I'm saying. Are that's, you not getting involved? I will get involved, but not like that. Obviously, Brooke will handle like most of it and I'll yeah. just add my little two pence in. On a scale of one <laughs> to 10, how, how big are we going to go? Oh, we're not going to go big. No. Yeah, nah, I small wanted amount, big before, but now I'm just like, do you know what? I don't think there's anything better yeah. than an intimate wedding yeah yeah and it'll be a party though <clears throat> a nice big because yeah, i mean nice like the friendship intimate. group everything is going to be turned yeah, it will be lit yeah it'll be, lit. It'll be so much fun it will be yeah. it will be but that's exciting though um so let's let's just break up a little bit so i'm going to ask you some questions some are like mr and mrs style and some are just like individual and you've got a quick find me back there's no thing too much thinking okay, okay. and i'm not going to give you context so whatever i ask you i could be asking about food i could be asking about okay. the weather but you just got to give me your immediate okay, reaction let's back go. we'll go jay first and then <laughs> okay. Brooklyn. okay let's go hot or cold hot hot or cold hot so is that hot spicy food as well Ooh. Ooh. Mid. Yeah, I'd say the same. What do you order well. at Nando's? Quarter chicken. No, I mean Curry. spice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's like not garlic the whole, bread. Not the whole order. Halloumi on the side. <laughs> hummus. Perry chips. Oh, actually, I'm very uh, mango. Is it mango and lime? No. I'm Perry but do they even do mango oh, and lime too. anymore? Yeah, Perry oh, But I didn't expect that from you. Yeah, too. but then I'll get like a medium sauce. What did you think we'd have? Because I know you you love Thai food. Oh my gosh, yeah. And Thais generally can be hot. So I thought you'd be hot really? for me. Yeah, I don't know why. Certain Thai dishes, aren't it? I like, like the flavour. They're like sweet flavours. Yeah. Coconut. Mm. Like coconut Depends. rice is actually fire. Yeah. <laughs> so sweet or savoury? Sweet. Ooh, savoury. Sweet. So you would take chocolate over a bag of crisps? 
See, I don't really like chocolate like that. But cake, you will. Yeah, cake. <laughs> See, <yeah>. <laughs> cake, <laughs> definitely. Cake, so, donuts, like, wait, yo. did you just say sweet? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and you're savoury. I would take a bag of crisps over, over a chocolate bar same. any day. Yeah, or I like would as well. I would as well, because yeah. I don't really, I don't eat chocolate, though. But if it was cake or crisps. <laughs> He's going cake. Yeah, I'm going What's cake. your favourite cake? Probably just like a plain sponge cake. No. Oh, no, no, He's sticky toffee, sticky no. toffee. Banana cake, <laughs> banana cake, banana cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, banana I love, cake. Yeah, I love yeah. how Brooke knows you better yeah. than yeah. you. Yeah. Honestly, banana even when we did the fine. podcast last <laughs> week. I've got to stay away from banana cake, though, because, yo, I'll eat the whole thing. That's, so I'll tell you a story, yeah. You've okay. seen um, COVID, like, everybody was making these sprinkle cakes. So anyway, I was like to Brooke, I was like, yo, babes, you reckon you can, like, pattern a, a sprinkle cake? She's like, yeah, I got this. Anyway... She started making these sprinkle cakes. No word of a lie. I'd have he one ate, slice, then I'd eat the, ate the whole, whole thing. Cake. I came I back downstairs cake. and the whole cake was gone. <laughs> a whole, uh, you know, the tray. Yeah. Nah, nah, no, like it wasn't that it, big. Jay, it, it was, was about. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a, it was big enough. So were you all or nothing? It's like, like one, one bite or the whole once cake. Once I started yeah. eating it, I was like, yo, That's this is fire. Can't stop. And then obviously I'm I a bit like that, you know. I'm all or nothing. Wow. Like I'm a bite or the whole, or the whole cake. Or like, I throw up. Nothing. Yeah, I am a bit. That's like, like that. me with um biscuits as well. Oh gosh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. Night in or night out? <sighs> now nah, we're talking now. I, this night in now. Night in. Me too. Yeah. Who is the most stubborn in the relationship? Ooh, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like. Who said sorry first? I'd probably Ooh, say Jay. sorry. I I feel like even I can answer some of these. Yeah, 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 yeah Jay. So I always think Jay is so laid back. Yeah. So they yeah. back yeah. and Brooke and Spirey. Yeah. yeah. Opposites yeah. attract. They do. Who, yeah. who wears the trousers though? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say me. Yeah, she's going to want to say her. But do you know what it is like? It depends, it depends on, it, on the situation. Is, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Give me, so. give me an example. Um, I think, if, okay, so, so if it's sorting like... Oh, I can't actually give an example. It depends, like... No, okay, okay for example, an exa- the wedding. Yeah, you're going to wear the trousers. Uh, yeah, because I am going to want it how I want yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, and then so any, I'm not that, that, like... I'm not too... Perfect. I know Brooke's got good style, so, like, I'm like, yeah, I know Brooke's got good style, so I don't feel like I need to get involved in yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? What was you going to say, Liz? The house. Who's wearing the trousers? See, see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. again, like, I know... Brooke's going to pattern that too. Yeah. So when do you the, wear the trousers, babe? So with the house, I'll get involved. <laughs> he and wears the trousers when it comes to the finance. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, okay. Finances, bills and all of that stuff. Jay, we need a sofa. Let's get the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> and with the house, my involvement's going to be like all the, the cool stuff, like the tech. It's going to be wicked. So just TVs. on a side note, Jay and Brooke are also doing a bit of like a house move. So I know that that's a huge part yeah. of life right now for you guys yeah. okay last one what is brooke's biggest fear spiders yeah. and what is jay's biggest fear Got rats two. and snakes yeah really yeah. oh i hate <laughs> rats and snakes too spiders i, I don't do, mind though. i don't mind snakes. spiders <gasps> gosh complete opposite rats yeah. and snakes it's the snakes for me my dad though. sent me I a video on snakes i wouldn't mind if there was just if you were in a zoo and there was here. an opportunity to hold a snake would you hold it mm. yeah you have can't I, be that scared. No, wait, then. wait. Have I done? Nah, I haven't done that before. I've held, See, I wouldn't go No, I've held a spider. Nah, nah, not a snake. Okay, let's get into it. Jay, yes. I would like you, for people who may or may not know you, I would just like you to briefly kind of like introduce yourself, how you would introduce yourself in this present time. Okay, so my name is Jay and I'm the founder of Hoodrich. And what is Hoodrich for those who don't know? Uh, Hoodrich is a streetwear brand. Yep. Um, based out of the UK, Birmingham to be exact. Big up Birmingham, did it, for the, did it for the city. Yeah, for the hometown, and yeah, I don't know what else I'd actually say. So in the last <laughs> podcast, I was like, Hoodrich, in my opinion, and I think legitimately, is probably the biggest streetwear brand in the UK, in my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay probably disagrees, but I know. Yeah. we don't. We yeah. don't, we're like fans <laughs> over here. <laughs> Um, and you've done an incredible job. And I think it's really interesting to learn about Jay and Brooklyn's journey because I think so much went on behind the scenes that no one knows. And 
Yeah. Like we'd never know unless we spoke yeah. about it. And I think it's such an empowering, incredible journey. And I just really want to touch on it, not only for just to learn about them, but for anyone who's watching this, who is a dreamer and a believer and wants to do something, not necessarily in streetwear or creating a clothing brand, but just in general, like chasing their dreams, having Jay on the sofa, I think is the perfect way to do that. Oh, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So let's talk about Hoodrich. Let's go. One of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, streetwear brand in the UK. If you haven't seen it on the street, like, you must be living under a rock. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you walk out, and especially if you didn't know beforehand, because maybe some of the audience are not into streetwear or know of Hoodrich, yeah. I swear to God, when you go out on the street now, every third person will be in something oh, Hoodrich. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Because when you think about it, and then it, you actually go out and you're like, oh my God, it's everywhere. Everywhere. Literally. But I remember yeah. the time... We didn't see any, like a single soul in there. And I was saying as well before that your mum would come back and be like, Chase has seen someone in Hoodridge then. I was like, where? Yeah. <laughs> we don't I, see it. And then all of a sudden it was just went look, crazy. Yeah. And she'd be really like specific with, you know, where she saw someone or she remembered like what they what were they wearing. What they looked like as well. And she's like, yeah, Jay, I see it. And we're like, wow, we do not see it Yeah. Because I remember like there was a time, yeah, where... Obviously, we was doing what we was doing, but I'd go out and I wouldn't see it every day. And then I just remember it just like, they, you go out and then you just see it every day. So yeah. Non-stop. Right. So let's Non-stop. talk about the journey a little bit. Before we talk on Hudrich, let's learn a little bit more about your specific journey. So take us back to when you were 17, 18. I remember in the previous podcast we recorded, you touched on working in, you know, like yeah. Iceland and those things. Just paint that out again because I okay. think it's an imperative part of yeah. who you are as a person. And one thing that I cling on to so much from the past um, podcast is that you said I have no, I had no ego. The car you were driving, the life you were living, mm-hmm. yeah. so humble and so with it and not ahead of yourself. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'll take it back all the way to like uh, secondary school. That's where I got into streetwear. So in secondary school, I used to sell sweets. Um, just I'd make like mix up bags and I'd go into school and I'd sell. <laughs> Sorry. What was that? <laughs> wow. Drops. Probably Sorry, continue, me. continue. Um, and I'd sell sweets and I'd make like 50, 60 pound a week, depending on how much sweets I'd sell. And I remember I'd always like go to JD Sports and I'd buy like a new jacket or something. So back in school, I kind of built up a reputation of being a kid that was fresh, fly. Um, and then my friend introduced me to streetwear. So that's when I got into like American streetwear. I started to know about like brands from overseas. Fast forward, I left school. I went to college to study media and then I worked in Iceland part time. So I was in college for two years and then I was in Iceland as well till I was, I left there. I was there till, I was there in Iceland, sorry, for two and a half years. Left Iceland, no, left college, <laughs> kept my job in Iceland, and I went to do an, uh, an apprenticeship at an electronic cigarette company. So I was doing a nine to five in an office. I remember it clearly, like going to the office, and like it's just a small office, and I had a computer, and I was just making phone calls. Um, I was making phone calls to uh, shops, speaking to the managers, and asking them how. They were getting on with their stand and if they needed like uh, replenishing and mm-hmm. how they was getting on with the stock and just getting feedback, come off the phone, update um, on the notes and stuff. So Monday to Friday, nine to five. So you know what it is like that? I can relate to the nine to five world. I've been there and I've done that. And I still kept my Iceland job on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So I was just working. You're working 24-7. Yeah. yeah, so I was just working a lot at that time. Um, and then after that, my mom set up, um, a before and after school club. So I left both my jobs and went to help her and worked as a play worker doing that. And I was 20 at the time. And that's when I decided, you know what, I'm just spending a lot of money on clothes. I don't have any savings. I didn't have any idea on what I actually wanted to do or be. And I just... Yeah, just said to myself, I'm going to start a brand. Um, to be specific. Yeah, let's tell them mm. the story. Yeah, when to, did that moment yeah. come? So to be specific, I was at uh, my parents' house. And, you know, I just remember coming out of the bathroom and just went into my bedroom. Brooke was just chilling on the bed. 
And I was just like, do you know what, babes? I'm going to start a brand. And then I think you asked me what I was going to call it. What going to call it, yeah. And I said, I was going to call it Hoodrich. And my attitude was just like, yo, if it, if it sells, it sells. Like, I'll just try it. But at first, you did want to make these clothes just for yourself. Yeah, which I did. So I made like a couple of t-shirts for myself <laughs> to start with initially. And then that's when everything else kind of happened where I started, I made the brand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's just a bit of like a brief backstory, I obviously. That's so interesting though. Like I think people would think, or like, oh no, I think people would never think the, the founder of Hoodrich worked at Iceland, had an office job and then worked in a daycare. Yeah, yeah. Like people look at success and maybe see it maybe as an overnight, like, or maybe he got lucky or, you know, he just found a good one. But no, you actually, from day dot, you've been a disciplined hard worker and you've always had a strong work ethic in your bones. Yeah. And I think that's half of the success of Hoodrich because mm -hmm. it's all about your discipline as well. Yeah. And we touched on further in the week, you were just like, you were obsessed, weren't you? With, with the brand yeah, yeah like with the brand in the early days i think as well like i want to just go back to iceland there was um social media app at the time called tumblr like that was popular back then i remember that yeah <gasps> and you still have your tumblr yeah account. i've still got it because that really um just like what i was seeing on there really inspired me but at the time you could write um anonymous messages mm -hmm. So I remember like coming home after one of my shifts working on the tills in Iceland and I checked my like anonymous messages and somebody had written a message saying, ha ha, seen you in Iceland today on the tills. Guess that means you failed your GCSEs. That is crazy, isn't it? And I was like, yo, I remember seeing that thinking, okay, cool. Like, wow. Like I know when I was much younger, I had like big aspirations and big dreams of like becoming something and becoming someone. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that like working in Iceland and just kind of living an average life isn't what I wanted for myself. I just hadn't figured out what I wanted to do. But yeah, that's just interesting. I think about that a lot and I've still kept my Iceland discount card. Um, just to get like 10%, but it's just all these things it just makes you who you are. Yeah, you you and it just makes me, I never want to go back to working on the tools. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I also think like, obviously I have the privilege as knowing you of like, both of you as like close friends, but although of this huge success you've made, I think you're one of the most humble people I know. Like you, you're not lairish in your face about yeah. it. You're still so grounded and such a family man and just so humble with it. Yeah. And I think, that kind of background and those kind of jobs that you've worked, you're very in touch with what is also yeah. real, you know? Because yeah. a lot of people win and then a lot of people lose control when they win. Yeah. But you're yeah. so grounded. Yeah. And I think that's a great attribute of yours. Nah, I appreciate it. I, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I also yeah. think, let's just quickly touch on it. Well, not quickly, because I think, I was actually saying to Seth in the car this morning, I was like, I don't think anybody knows how, the impact of Brooklyn on Hoodrich mm. and the impact of your relationship on the success of yourself mm. and you. And I think it's really important to talk about it, especially in this day and age where the grass is always greener mm. and relationships aren't seen as so important mm. in the fact of like um, working on them and being a real team. Talk to us about the team of you two and how it brought such like fruitfulness to not only you as a pair, mm. but also the business. When I first, I was gonna say first discovered you. <laughs> <laughs> when I first heard about Jay, I was in school and I would like meet up in like the town center and they had like a group of friends and they were like, oh my gosh, going crazy over this one boy. And he went to a school in Birmingham, obviously closer to where Jay lived. And I was like, who's this boy? And he's like, oh, I've it was Jay's brother. But at the time I didn't know him or mm -hmm. Jay. And they're like, oh, he's got an older brother. And I was like, older brother? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of liked the older ones then. Still do, obviously, Jay. <laughs> um, and I was like, wow. Like, and then I was just kind of getting to like know about his brother and then I'd see his brother out and at times and then knew about Jay and then he's like his family. And I was like, oh, like I love their unit, like mm -hmm. they're such like a lovely, like close family. Mm -hmm. And it was just like so interesting to see. And then 
your stories is completely different. Yeah, so I was in, I can't remember the year, but I was in Jamaica. Um, and when you go to Jamaica, those people, everyone knows when you go to the hotels, there's loads of people from like different areas. So I made friends with like a group of um, people from London. And one of the friends that I'd made, he was like, obviously he knew that I was from Birmingham and he was like, yo, um, I know about this girl from Birmingham and he was showing me a picture and he was like, oh, mixed race, green eyes. <laughs> and then he showed me and it was Brooke. Mm -hmm. um, but you didn't know me at this point. Yeah, I didn't know Brooke at the time. And obviously that was like years ago. So that was the first time that I actually saw Brooke like, and kind of, well, saw a picture. <clears throat> yeah, um, and then fast forward. Fast forward. We then had mutual friends mm -hmm. and we met at a house, house party. House party. In the area that we ended up. Yeah, yeah. So we met at a house party. Uh, we were speaking together. though before that on like Twitter. Yeah, wasn't you? social so media and stuff. And, and then. Was it, and was it Love at you. First Sight? It was Love at First Sight. Do you know what's mad? Do you know where we actually first met? It where? was at that. um whose uh, party was it on Broad Street at the No, hotel? that was the second time. Was that the second time? Yeah. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> it was the second time. First, it was Canterbury Close. Oh, okay. The house party. Yeah. And then... It was like 10 years ago. <clears throat> and, yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Over 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, no. And then we left it at that. I knew he was interested. And I was like, ooh, okay. Brain hard to get. Yeah. Just, you know, no thing. <laughs> and then... We kicked it off okay, at yeah, yeah, yeah. the hotel party yeah, on Broad yeah, yeah. Street. My How bad. crazy! My bad. We've literally met full circle moment. in the area that you know we got a house together. Yeah. yeah, and then the second time when we kicked it off, we now live in that area. That's it's so mad. Strange. Like yeah, it's, it's crazy. Mad. It is mad. And since you guys met, you literally like obsessed with each other and spent all your time together. Yeah. which is correct. Yeah. Which is why I always say that Brooklyn's um, involvement in the business and her support is so imperative to the journey. In my opinion, I don't know if you would agree, yeah. but kind yeah. of just the stories you were telling before, like just think it's crazy how you were always kind of there and giving support and both emotionally. I think that's so important. Yeah. You know, like the emotional support that a partner can give to another when mm -hmm. they are running something yeah. to this size. Um, Obviously, when you're in a relationship as well and you're like witnessing your partner doing a brand like from the ground up, you are also emotionally invested in that because what they go through is what you go through mm -hmm. and you're always trying to like problem solve together and that's mm. just it as much as it's like obviously it's jay's brand but as much as it's jay's brand it's also mine mm -hmm. like that's just how you i feel, feel like, because it's like yeah. we are a unit like we are mm -hmm. just one and going back to the days where you were at your mom's house because you were when you guys got together and became obsessed with each other brooklyn was like i never wanted to leave the side so you spent a lot of time at each other's parents house but yeah. At your mom's house, you spent a lot of time, and that was yeah. where kind of Hoodrich started to I think of it like a tree grow. Yeah. So, yeah. talk to us about that. So, what was the initial investment to start? Um, so, I started Hoodrich with two hundred pounds. Um, I got thirty t-shirts made, fifteen white, fifteen black, um, and I remember like when I went to pick up the t-shirts. Obviously, Brooke would come with me. And I just remember like being, obviously I'm driving, she's in the passenger seat. She? she in the passenger seat? That's in good. Seat. seat. <laughs> oh, God. Passenger seat. It's a bit of a tongue twister that. It yeah. is. In the um, and I used to print out, I printed my first t-shirts on Gildan. So for those that know, a lot of people start out with Gildan. Not the best quality now, but obviously back then it, it is what it is. And like Brooke was like cutting out the labels, and like making sure it was all perfect, folding them. And then I'd just drive around and I would had sales. And like the first t-shirts all got sold out of um, the boot of my car. I didn't have a website for a little while, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> it was just kind of like people, you know, friends yeah. and friends, mm -hmm. like selling around the area. It just started off like really small, just really small. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I didn't know anything about running a brand as well. So I'm just using kind of like Google my initiative just to do a lot of research mm -hmm. um but one thing i'd say is i was just active like i was just i was on it I was trying to always look for new ways to do things and just just wanted to just 
see how far it could mm-hmm. take it really. and you said to me in the week you were like oh you know with being bed at like 9 p.m and someone would call and be like yo bro i'm going out i need a t-shirt and you would get up get yeah. in the car with brooke and you would go and give him yeah that t-shirt this could happen at like any time of the mm-hmm. night yeah. it could literally be like someone decided to go out at 11 mm-hmm. and we're like oh gosh we need to get in the car mm-hmm. and just because it was like we were there like watching a film i could always just go with him mm-hmm. yeah so get that- in the car and just do the journey and we'd always meet up um, there was one car park. What was it called in Erdington? Macklin's car park. Macklin's car park, Macklin's park, car park. was literally yeah, like yeah, yeah. the, the spot, spot to, get that. That's where I to just, meet everyone. Because yeah. like we also didn't want anyone to know like where we were based mm-hmm. and lived. Because obviously you just, just meet privacy. you could be meeting random yeah. people as well at mm-hmm. times. So we always met at Macklin's car park, and yeah. I'd just be in the car, and Jay would be um, in, in the, the booth. booth showing sizes like, "Will this fit you?" And yeah, yeah it was fine. That's what I'm saying. Time. It's crazy. That's but I think it. that, like, these little snippets in your story is why, like, when I look at it from an outsider's view, like, why you are successful. Because so many people would have maybe received that phone call and been like, not tonight, bro. Not tonight, Like, I'm yeah. tired, I'm with my girl. Or exactly as well. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people do get distracted mm-hmm. by having, like, a partner that you're trying to focus on and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Whereas I don't think that ever... No, nah, I just think, like, I was really focused on the brand and what I needed to do with mm-hmm. the brand. And obviously I was with Brooke and mm-hmm. Brooke was just kind of like, obviously my partner at the time and just supporting me. So it was just like, I'm leading and I'm doing what I need to do. And Brooke is just with me mm-hmm. every step of the way. So that's just kind of how it, how it worked. I just feel like, yeah, when I look back and think about, you know, how far we've come and why we've been able to come, it's just, you've got to be a team. You've got to be a team. Mm-hmm. Like if, For example, if I'm leading and I'm saying like, we're doing this, I need Brooke to cooperate with me and and Mm -hmm. be be able to like um, work with me on whatever Mm -hmm. we do. And so I think Mm -hmm. that's what, you know, we did over the years and we just built that up and then we learned a lot from each other. And I've learned a lot from Brooke and, um, you know, she's learned a lot from me because you got to remember females um, think differently about things. (laughs) Say that again. So I think... (laughs) I think one thing that um, has helped me is you you get to have a female perspective on things. Now, I'll go to Brooke with whatever. She'll give me her perspective. Whether I listen to that or take the advice, that's up, up to, to me. You. But mm-hmm. it's good to have that different perspective. So I can, yeah, like, yeah, energy. Yeah, 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 so yes. I can... So in my thoughts throughout, you know, me building a business, they've not been like one dimensional. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I've, important. I've had. I think it's really, really important. Obviously, I've never done a clothing business. I don't know what it takes. I don't know what it feels yeah. like. But I think having, you know, each other in the journey, I think, is just incredible. So you were kind of, at the very initial beginning, it was very small. You were doing it for yourself. You were into streetwear, the baggy style, American vibes. You yeah. were getting yeah. these t-shirts printed, selling them out the back of your car. It's all, very, it's like the fairy tale story when yeah, you think about literally. it. <laughs> then what, what then started to propel you? So kind of what then accelerated quickly and what, tell us the steps next that you took from taking it from a, Bedroom a little brand. bedroom brand yeah. where the boxes are in your mom's yeah. house and you're just connecting with friends for them to wear a t-shirt on a night out. Yeah. Tell, tell us then the next steps. That- so basically when I first started the brand, I was running it from my parents' house and we'd have like boxes in the corridors and everything. Um, and that started, it started to get to a stage where it was like, okay, I reckon I could take on a small office space now. So ended up getting a small office space in Aston. You um, say small, Jay. Well, I don't it, remember it being small. Yeah, it was a uh, good size. It was a really good size. But it wasn't... Yeah, it, it wasn't, like, really small. It wasn't huge, but it was not small. Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know what the square foot would be. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. that small because you had to... Yeah, yeah. So, and you it was a, de- it was a decent size. Um, but, yeah, that getting into what happened there is a whole other story. <laughs> but, anyway, we had that for a period of time, but then couldn't afford to, with the upkeep of the office... So I ended up moving back into my parents' um, house and I had an office in like um, the back room. Then from there, just running the brand. Um, at this point, I was doing everything. So for the first three and a half years, it was just kind of, obviously Brooke was helping me and stuff, but it was mainly just like um, me doing everything from like um, sitting with the designers, 
uh, go in to pick up the product from the screen printers, uh, build it, I built websites, um, I learned how to use Shopify, picking and packing orders. You were doing everything. Like yeah. fold, like literally folding, folding clothes, yeah. polybagging it, putting the size labels yeah. on. Yeah. Um, customer service, I've done, I've been a photographer, mm. I've lit- been a model. Yeah. I've like, I've literally, (laughs) I've done everything. Like, (laughs) yeah, I've done everything. So that's what was happening for the first three and a half years. Then this is where it gets really interesting because this is where I say is the turning point for the brand. So checked my Instagram DMs one day and I had a message from the Foot Asylum buyer. And I checked the message and he basically reached out and said, hello, Jay, really, um, really impressed with what you've been building, been following the brand for the last, you know, couple of years, just keeping a close eye on it. I can see that, you know, it's going somewhere. Is there any chance we could meet up and have a talk and see if there's any um, room to kind of maybe put a small collection of Goodrich in to Foot Asylum? So then I scrolled up and he'd messaged me before and I was like, shit, I've missed, missed like, it. yeah, because I looked at that as like a huge opportunity. Oh, of um, course. Yeah. That is a huge it's opportunity. A, 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 yeah, it's still now and then, yeah. then it was. Cause yeah. It was like, wow. Because because one thing back then, no streetwear brand had gone into like a, a mainstream store. store. Yeah. yeah, like for Asylum, like a true streetwear mm-hmm. brand. So then a couple of weeks later, I actually got an email from um, my then business partners um so they reached out to me and one of them he was the ex-agent for rockaware which is jay-z's brand and he had owned a streetwear store in east london back in the day so i was like you know what uh these guys are worth having a chat with um and i remember me and my friend tom who he like studied business he's a lot more you know, smarter than I am. Just yeah. to give everybody a bit of background, I'm like a very creative person. I'm not really like business savvy like that. Um, so my friend who's more, you know, into that sort of stuff, he came with me and we had two meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, and after the second one, he kind of told me, just said, look, this is, you know, what they're offering. And I made the decision and I said, look, I'm going to do it. So I took the risk of giving away 50% of my company. And I remember actually one of my business partners said to me at the time, he said, look, 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. And, you know, going back as well, Brooke will be able to, like, Hoodrich, it kind of, it was, it wasn't really going anywhere. No, so I feel like he was at at that time. He was at like a standstill. And I think as well, finances were like the main thing for you and mm. when you had that message from foot asylum yeah at that point it was like oh my gosh like all your hard work has paid off like you've done this on your own you've built your brand this up. could be your break someone has recognized your hard work your brand for what it is this is going to be great but when you got stuck into that and you was like speaking to them it was like you can't actually afford to get the stock that they want okay mm. because it, it was a lot that you had to invest into it first because how it works is it would come out of Jay's pocket mm-hmm. for all the stock they want and mm-hmm. then he would get paid after they receive yeah. it. So at that so time, it needed it was like, like an injection of investment yeah. to get it in there. Yeah. But you didn't have but the finances. But Jay didn't have it. it. No. So, wow. And it was like, it was perfect timing because then your business partners at the time were able to do that. Were yeah. able to do that and they come at the. Yeah, perfect that time. time and. Just to touch on, it's not necessarily just finances as well. Like, there's like experience, knowledge, yeah. knowing how the, the industry logistics, works, yeah. logistics. Yeah. Like, there's so much to it. So, like, yeah, there was a lot. There's a lot to it. So, like, as I got into it, I used to turn around and I'd say to like, say to Brooke and I'd say to my parents, I'd be like, money isn't everything, you know. It's like someone could have gave me like, could have given me like. 100k it's the knowledge and it's you've got to know where to take the brand and the what, operation yeah man yeah. and how to like leverage certain things there's so much that i've learned so it's not it's not just money i think it's a combination of obviously yeah, finance of finance it's just everything isn't it yeah it's definitely is, obviously you have a certain skill and yeah. you've never had the experience always never 
been in this position before where he has been running the business. It's, it's his first time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and they were a lot older. Like your business partners were like 70. 72. 72 and, and 50. Yeah, yeah. Knowledge is power. Yeah. Yeah. They really had that and to help. Yeah. At so the time, that no, that's how old they are now. Oh, they were, oh yeah. <laughs> they were younger. Yeah, they were younger then. <laughs> and I remember you saying earlier in the week, you were like, you kind of already alluded to it, but I just think it's really pivotal. Like you were at a point where you were like, I don't know where to go with this. Like Kudarich wasn't exactly thriving both financially and in other ways. And it was kind of like that moment. It was like that shining star that kind of was in the universe coming to yeah, get you. Definitely. And it just propelled you into kind of like another dimension mm -hmm. going into foot asylum and having that, um, those two business partners, you were like, that was my break. Yeah. That's definitely when I look back, that's when everything changed. Because when we got into Foot Asylum and I got into um, business with my um, business partners, that's when we was able to build a team. Because mm -hmm. before all of this, I used to sit in my parents' house and I'd, you know, I'd watch a lot of, um, it wasn't really podcasts at the time. I was listening to, I was watching a lot of other brand owners, like on YouTube vlogs, American brand owners and like how they were running their business. And one thing I picked up on early was you need a team. So it was like, yeah, from then I knew that I needed a team for it to become successful and to grow. So then when I got with my business partners, I was able to stop, have a small team. What we did was we had two offices, one in Birmingham and one in Watford. In Watford, there was two people, my two business partners at the time. And then there was me and um, another guy who's not with the brand anymore. So it was just like four of us. Um, and it just, yeah, it was just working away. So when I first um, got into business, what we did was we needed a designer. So I put out something on Instagram looking for somebody who can design. Somebody got back to me. I ended up meeting them in town. They lived in Warsaw. Um, we went south I told them about like what the brand um, means and what it represents. And before we was able to get another office, I was working in his house and I'd be there till like early hours of the morning, just sat next to him, just like working on designs. We was basically building a collection for Foot Asylum at the time. Mm -hmm. And then we was working on product to relaunch the Hoodrich website. So yeah, and then cut a long story short, we ended up getting another office back in the same building that I was in Full before. Full circle moments again. Yeah. So I was like, called up Alison. I, was I like, can afford it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, Alison, look, man, um, you know, I always paid my rent on time before. I need an office again now. Um, so then, yeah, they was able to sort me out. Then it was just us two. And that was for a long time. Yeah. That was a that was a good, good amount of time. While. Yeah, it just built, it built slowly. And then <clears throat> what happened was like people who were like working with the brand on like a freelance basis, when it was time to grow, I just kind of brought, brought them, them in. in. Then we had like the start of what I'd call the core foundation. Mm -hmm. And then we just built from there. We've hired and people, we've had to let people go and people haven't been right for the brand. When you had your business partners come in and you went to, into Foot Asylum, then what happened? Because I know other companies came for you and I think JD Sports contacted you. And I feel like that's when Hoodrich really began to get its recognition. I mean, you're in a high street store, like you're in yeah. Foot Asylum. I know it's still popping now. I don't know if it's popping as much, yeah. but back then. Also a big thing as well, like when you first started your brand, like you was into your streetwear and when JD and Foot Asylum, obviously you built, sorry, you built the brand off being into streetwear. Mm -hmm. So you use very like a bit more like urban underground kind of vibe. But then when JD and Foot Asylum reached out, you, there was a big decision that you had to make yeah. whether you wanted to go commercial or not. Interesting. And yeah. that was like a big conversation that we had for so long. And we're like, oh my gosh, you just got to like weigh out the options. Like what is your vision for your brand? Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to, yeah. Do you want to be the first, not the first, but like a streetwear brand to go into a commercial? To cross over. Yeah, to cross over in that yeah. sense. And it was obviously the best, best idea, the best decision that you ever made, I think, personally. Yeah. Um, because at the time, I don't think that JD and Foot Asylum had anything like yeah. Hoodrich. Because I think 
So just touching on what Brooke was saying, before Hoodrich, there was no, as I said, I think I said it previously in the podcast, there was no um, streetwear brands that existed in a commercial space, but also existed um, in like the, they had their own website where they would sell their own products, basically. So I had to make a decision um, whether I wanted to like cross over into that commercial space with Foot Asylum. There was a couple of things that helped me make that decision. I, I remember when I was like selling online and stuff, people used to say this, they were seeing Hoodrich in like different areas. This was before, you know, it went into any mm -hmm. stores and different types of people were wearing it. So that let me know that, okay, Hoodrich is, you know, there's, there's more to it, more, it's not just people that are into like um, underground streetwear mm -hmm. that want to wear it, like different mm -hmm. people. So I just, I thought that, you know, it's a good opportunity. It will give the brand exposure and it will open a lot more doors. And my thought process at the time was that Hoodrich will go into Foot Asylum and it will make people who wouldn't necessarily go into Foot Asylum go in there to check out the brand there just to see what Hoodrich is all about. So we went into Foot Asylum and then we was trading really well. And then JD came knocking on the door. They were like, we want a piece of that. <laughs> and that was really crazy because Foot Asylum wanted to keep us exclusive. So I remember I was 25 at the time and I remember me and my business partner, um, I'm 30 now, so this was five years ago. We went down to Foot Asylum. We had to have a meeting with all the top people. We were sitting in this boardroom, this big table. And they were saying, you know, they were actually saying to me, you know, we don't think that going into um, JD uh, will, will, is a good idea. You should stay exclusive with us. And I just remember thinking that JD Sports, you know, obviously it's a reputable company. And what I liked about JD is they had the uh, ability to offer us international doors, which was a lot more growth. And now we are an international brand. So, you know, I remember just saying to them, look, I'm 25 years old and I've got to take this opportunity. I just feel like it's the right thing to do. I ended up taking the opportunity and we went into JD Sports November 2019. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ever since we've just been working with them, growing with them. And, you know, we, we've got an international brand and people, they'll go into JD and they'll see, do you know what I mean? I, I don't really need to say too much um but yeah and so no regrets in that sense as to them saying we don't think this is right for you. i mean a bit cheeky is that mm -hmm. not that's just them but being, they, yeah they yeah. wanted to keep it they want to keep you they, yeah, yeah like yeah. of course any brand would do that but yeah don't course. know necessarily necessarily if that's in the best interest of you yeah. and like actually the growth of hoodrich yeah. and would you say when it went into jd it really took a level up in terms of exposure, sales. Yeah, that's when that's when like really you start to see it. every day, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, the, the brand just grew. I remember it was I think I think we both did it though. So I think we I went put halves to like a collection. Two hundred in and you put two hundred in. Yeah. Probably was a bit more than a that, bit more. You know? yeah. So we halved it basically and I was like, Yeah, I just really want to like do the women's collection. And I remember like sitting I don't know how we did the designs though. Who did we sit with? <laughs> Was it sketch? But there was the so time? yeah, there were so. I like, remember. Yeah. They were very basic at that time. It was like a grey long sleeve with yeah, Hoodrich on. It was, it was still yeah. good though. It was still good. And a a did, lot of girls tapped into yeah, it. Yeah, and we did the first. I remember sometimes as well. I tried. We bought a screen printing machine. Nah, it was a heat press. Heat machine. press machine. Sorry. Yeah. And I was like, I'm adamant. I can heat press. Mm -hmm. on these clothes myself so yeah, it was mad. Yeah, <laughs> we've got like pictures that. of me like in the office yeah, and we're like pressing. testing his heat pressing machine mm -hmm. doing like the other women's collection and then we did the first shoot with our friend daisy mm -hmm. and yeah and then it just we kind of just had to leave it because the men's out, was man. growing so much that I think probably could right no then in that stage, your energy it. wasn't there for it yeah if it fizzled no. out it's because <clears throat> and because of obviously it's jay's brand like his energy has to be there for women's as well, not just mine. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? Okay, let's let's just leave do, women's. Um, sorry, side note, just do they stock women's in store now or is it just men's? Yeah. There's women's as well? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it used to be called Hoodrich Honeys. Yeah, that is a throwback. <laughs> we used that's to call it Hoodrich Honeys. Do you know, oh, we haven't even, because 
Um, we had the hundred twenties <laughs> tops at when I did the takeover event. Remember? Yeah, I oh, can't you got to believe tell them about that. I haven't yeah. kept. Anything please, please, please tell them about the event that you did way back. When one of the things that I wanted to do with Hoodrich was just see how I could make like just do it differently. So it's like I want to do an event. So I decided to came up with the name the Hoodrich Takeover event. It was like one pound entry. Um, there was food there. There was clothes for sale. There was a live DJ. It was just like a vibe, like people just come in, chilling. Um, so that's when I had some of the Hoodrich Honeys tops for tops, sale there. Yeah. Um, but I did two of them events. The first one was really good. Um, it was a success. So I did the second one. The second one I got a Mr. Perform at the second one. It was, yeah, it was um, crazy. But tell us about the shirt t-shirts that you ordered oh yeah and then oh you have, gosh yeah. yeah and then you have to tell the so was story. this before that event though this was for like an was it like your first online drop or something no no no, no it was no, for no. the event you for, said the, for, the, for event? the event yeah the first event okay With go on spelling must say yeah so all <laughs> all basically i was getting stuff made in pakistan stuff like manufactured overseas and sent off all the um like the designs, tech packs or whatever, not even tech packs at the time, just the artwork files, um, paid, the product had been delivered and you know, I'm just opening it up, I'm just trying it on. There was a, there was a few things that was wrong. So the first thing was, I was trying on one of the long sleeves and Brooke noticed that um, there was a spelling mistake. Yeah, so I'm literally just, we're in uh, your parents' house now in your bedroom and you're like by the window and your back's towards me. And he's like, oh yeah, these are the new shirts. And he's kind of giving me like a, a show of the new stuff. And I was like, okay, nice. Like I can like these. And then he turned around and it was like in a circle, wasn't it? And then writing yeah. going down. And what did it say? Um, or meant to say? It meant it was meant to say remain relevant. Remain relevant. <laughs> so I'm like reading like the t-shirt and I was like, remain, re remain relevant. Yeah, remain relevant. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Jay. <laughs> a part of me didn't want to say it. I was like, oh, because no, I to. knew how many was ordered yeah. and how big, how huge this mm -hmm. was for Jay. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh no, that's Jay's dyslexia. <laughs> Yeah, basically. If you didn't know, Jay has, you don't have like, it's not. That's another story. It's not severe, well, but you know, you have yeah. mild dyslexia. Yeah, so I've got dyslexia. We, so I was reading, I was like, Jay, it says remain relevant. He literally turned around because his back was towards <laughs> me. And he was like, you're joking. I was like, no, no, no. It says remain relevant. What's it supposed to say? <laughs> he was like, shit, took the t-shirt off. He put it on the bed and he was like, oh, shit. He was just going crazy. And I was like, oh no. I was just sitting there in silence and didn't know what to do. Because you had so many of them. So yeah, many. Yeah, we had a lot. And we had um, like woven labels as well on the hoodies. Was able to pick them off. But as well, the prints on the hoodies, the prints was terrible. So yeah. it was just a bit of a fail. Yeah, it was a bit of a fail. But you know what? Despite that, still sold them. You still sold still them. Still sold them. <laughs> That's when you know you're probably when you can sell it with. I just, not, not everything sold. I wonder but if like, someone's still got a vintage Remain Relvin. Let us know if anyone has a Remain Relvin. I Ralvin know, man. I'd be interested to see. Someone's got to have one somewhere. <laughs> Um, so it's yeah. all part. Of the, I feel like it's all part of the journey, though. You you're gonna take L's, and that oh, was a bit gosh, of an yeah. L. Um, so fast forward onto you, you're in JD, you're in for asylum. You've got your business partners. You've got that injection of cash. You've got that financial knowledge, power. Those people with experience. They mm -hmm. are a lot older than you. Yeah. Then what happened? Because we're probably now going into so, 2020, like the past three years, kind of. Yeah. Then what? What okay. was the journey? So pre COVID, yeah. So it was in the office in Aston till COVID. So pre COVID, we built up the team in Birmingham. There was pro there was four of us, mm -hmm. and we was just um, yeah, we was just working with retail. Obviously, Foot Asylum, um, JD was really early at that time. In I had gone on a few trips to. I'd been to Nepal. Um, to like look at the factories because that's where we was getting clothes made originally. That was like a really good experience. Mm -hmm. Then, quite a long story short, the quality of Nepal wasn't good enough for 
what I wanted to put into shops. So we moved everything to Turkey, Istanbul. So we did a few trip, trips over there. And I remember going to Istanbul, like not everything went smooth at first. There was a lot that I had to learn and there was a lot um, that we had to implement because, you know, the standard of the quality, I wanted it to be of a certain standard. So that was a bit of a roller coaster. Ended up getting that all sorted out. Um, then we kind of hit COVID. COVID was interesting because the brand actually grew in COVID. Um, Amazing. But it yeah. was hard because it was like we're a creative brand and we have to be creative in our how in our houses and do loads of Zoom calls. I remember like I was getting tracksuits delivered to the house oh and um, I was like putting them on and Brooke was like taking pictures, <laughs> pictures. of me and we were using them as using ads. Using them, yeah, as ads for her Yeah, for her. And yeah, this was crazy. like you was in... JD and Footsong yeah, at this yeah. time. So like that is what, Yeah, it was in Yeah, that was like just J yeah, it was in JD. I yeah. Think. And it would come, but your business partner was like, Jay, just come on, be the model in your home. And was like, yeah. Well you had to okay. do something. Like yeah, I feel like we had to. COVID tested people and business in so many different yeah. ways. And like yeah. you had to kind of like adjust and adapt. Yeah. And some made it work and some yeah. didn't. It was like But the most we were doing period. some wild photography <laughs> yeah, was i was like mad. standing on the sofa and jay's like chilling, mad jay's chilling like this and i'm <laughs> over up. him like <laughs> Yo, on top it was of the sofa but and they loved it. it they put it they used it as one of the ads. yeah That's and it was so a good. it was a really good performer so yeah we just we just got creative in um covid and we just kind of did what we had to do um, I think as a company, we just kind of made the decision to keep our foot on the gas. Mm -hmm. And that was the best thing that we did because well, when we came out of COVID, we were just, we were still on, we still had that momentum. Yeah. yeah. I think it's wild that so many people were buying you know, to I sit just in their had home. That thought. Like, I just had that thought. I don't think people realize people were buying in yeah. COVID. Like, I think performance for a lot of it's companies mad. in I that think sense. It, it was boredom because yeah, but people were no one could go lot. out. Yeah, <laughs> people were spending money, and also in a way, I know it was a super hard time and furlough, and yeah. a lot of people lost their jobs, and it was really, really a yeah, crazy it was, time. It was a hard but time for others, they were saving so much money. Yeah, no commute to work. You know, like little things like yeah. not having to spend money for lunch. People were saving a lot of money, saving so people so were much. spending. Yeah. It, was it was crazy. It was crazy. I, 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 we didn't think that. That's what would happen. We thought, gosh, you know, everyone's losing their jobs. Yeah. We're even yeah. not able to, like, I couldn't go to work. You couldn't go to work, obviously. So it was so, like, wow, um, how is it, how is your business going to grow? Yeah. So fortunate, though, honestly. I know. When I think yeah, back definitely. to that. Because uh, just hearing a lot of other business owner stories about COVID, it just kind of put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just blessed to be able to get through COVID and still have a you know a lucrative business yeah. on the other on the other side. So yeah, we had someone who I can't say for legal reasons that wanted to acquire the brand first. And what does acquire mean? Because Just, but in the week I didn't know what it meant. Basically, yeah. buy. But basically, like what happened was, so my two business partners are older, and the oldest one, you know, when I got into business with him, he said, "Look, this is my last climb up the ladder, um, and he will be retiring in." you know, a few years. So I always knew that that was going to come. I didn't know what it was going to look like exactly. Mm -hmm. So I had, we'd had discussions and, you know, I had a few different options. I could either sell all of my equity, which was my 50% of Hoodrich, which I never really wanted to do. Um, or I could kind of construct a deal which kind of made um, sense for me in terms of wanting to stay on. So I kind of said, you know what, I want to sell, I want to keep a percentage and then I'll sell the rest. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I ended up saying like, I'm willing to sell 40%. I'm going to keep 10%. The first people that came along, uh, you know, they were happy with that. The deal got all the way down the line and mm -hmm. they just pulled out. Do you know why? Uh, Oh, you can't. Yeah, say. I do, but I can't say because the roller coaster that we went through oh, when you when you're gosh. doing that because obviously you're getting like lawyers involved. Yeah, everything's yeah. got to be right. It, it's but obviously, future. as well, it's a huge, it's a huge step to take in yeah. business, especially for somebody who's never been in a position before. Mm -hmm. So I think even for us, it was like a lot to digest, and we yeah. were then trying to like make plans for the future, and it, 
it was just so crazy. So yeah, then without falling lot. through, it just Yeah. It did emotionally as well, like affect us, I think. Like Yeah, I think you just kinda because I was still digesting the fact that he was actually selling. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I remember the first time he yeah. told me almost had a heart attack. I was like, what? I, I was dealt like, with this it is a lot better, baby, obviously. You cannot. That's brought being like emotional. Yeah, but, but now like it, it took me time yeah. and I was like, okay, I completely understand. Because like, I'm thinking about we, I'm planning for the future. So if I've got the opportunity to secure our family, like obviously we haven't got our family yet, but like, Mm-hmm. Uh, the future of our family like as the man and as the you know the provider I need to be making the that right decision decisions. yeah not mm. like making an emotional decision like oh, that's I, where he wears the trousers <laughs> <laughs> not making an emotional decision like oh it's my baby and it's I my, don't want to let it go do you yeah. know what I mean like you gotta I had to get into my thinking logical Business bag yeah, yeah. yeah do you know what I mean and just be like right this is a good opportunity it will enable us to be, you know, good and yeah. yeah, and and set. So that's where my thinking was at. So anyway, that deal uh, went that's through. Good. Business carried on as normal, as normal. As normal. It was a bit of a, a weird time at, at first. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it really did like affect you in some way though, because I think you had your hopes up and you kind of felt settled from the first yeah. one, and you had all these plans. It was like, okay, I feel. Like I've achieved everything I've wanted to now, and then it's like that just got taken, got taken away. away. Yeah. Yeah. So it did, and yeah. your mood completely changed for, for like a whole year until the next one. Yeah, so I had to just kind of suck it up and carry on. Um, but again, that's all part of like business, isn't yeah. it? Like you've got to be resilient. You've got to keep going, no matter what. And to be honest, only you. Well, nobody in the company actually knew. So. That's another thing. So, like, oh, obviously, Brooke knew, but, and me and my business partners knew, but nobody who worked for the company knew. So, anyway, um, my business partner calls me and he's like, Jay, um, you know, we've had some early conversations with a company. They're called Iconics, they're an American company. They know all about you, they know all about your story. Um, We've let them know that you would like to retain 10% um, and you're willing to sell 40 and they're cool with that. So I was like, all right, cool, this sounds good. Um, But my business partner was like, we still got to have a few conversations because they're doing a bit of like, I can't say that word. Due due diligence. Yes. What is it? Due Due diligence. Due Due diligence. diligence. Yeah. Due diligence. So left it for a bit, just... Because you know what it you was? You don't want to get too deep again. Nah, because, no, yeah, 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 so I'd yeah. learned from that. You got that. your guard up then. <clears throat> yeah. So I was like, oh, I've been through this before. I'm just going to carry on. I'm just going to act like it's not going to happen. Probably the best way as well. Yeah. We literally acted like it wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. Even, up, we'll get to that, even to like the last point. But anyway, ended up meeting the guys. So one of them flew in from America and Iconics have got an um, office based in the UK. So met the two guys who were, um, constructing the deal just told them a little bit about myself you know my story what I want um, where I want Hoodrich to go you know what I want the brand to achieve mm-hmm. they bought into that they were aligned um, so that was all cool worked with my lawyer on constructing like um, my contract and you know all the little key points was happy with that. Um, and then the process had, was, had started really and it just went on for months um, to get it over the line. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of like Zoom calls with lawyers going through like um, SPA, which is something called sales purchase agreement. Um, the whole of last, it's the the whole of last year was just so stress. Yeah, it was just it was long. So when you're, sorry, just to kind of some like, if anyone is thinking what I'm thinking, this will clarify it. So when your business came on board, 
biz- two business partners came on board. Did they take 25% each yes. to make up that 50%? Then yeah. you had 50%. They sold completely. They've sold, they've now. They're out. And they've exited yeah. and okay, I cool. sold but stayed on. So two business partners gave it all up to Iconics. You gave up 40. So now Iconics has got 90 and you've got 10. Yeah. yeah. Just to anyone out there that just, just needed clarify. that little like, <laughs> that summary. Because in my head, yeah. I'm like, no way. I just need to be Yeah, it's up. so confusing. Yeah. No, yeah. but that, it's, uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's confusing. I just it, really need to like, take. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what's mad? Like, I do a lot of reading and listen to a lot of podcasts. And I didn't know that. Um, I thought that, uh, what's his name now? Jeff Bezos owned like a lot of Amazon, but he only owns a small percentage. And just listening to people like, there was a saying they'd rather um, have, what is it? A slice of uh, a watermelon than have a whole grape. Basically saying, you know, they'd rather have something, a small percentage of something that's big rather than have a big percentage. Oh, yeah. So, wow, yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So some, now I Some free it's... game. <laughs> <laughs> so it went through the line. Yeah. It was man. all public news, wasn't it? Iconic. It was, wasn't it? It actually. <laughs> it was yeah. not, sorry. Like public news. It was in the news and everything. Uh, Yeah, they. it was in the news. Yeah, it was. It was. was. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, my dad yeah. was speaking to me about it. I was like, yeah. how did you see that? He's like, it's in the yeah, news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, was. So before that, like I had calls with like people from press and they were like asking me questions and I had to like write up a, like a bit of a statement. But you wanted to keep it all under wraps though, but that was just out of your control. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Mr. that's Pri- just Mr. Private over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, again, just like even doing this podcast, I'm kind of getting putting myself out there a bit more now. We um, love it, and just obviously we're still private, but just yeah, not as private. <laughs> giving them a taste, then. Yeah, just giving them an insight. Mm-hmm. I just think it helps and puts things into perspective because Absolutely. people don't they don't know. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and I always say to Joe as well, like your story is just so real, compelling, and yeah can be so relatable to so many so people relatable. that I think it's good to tell your story because mm-hmm. people will just learn from you and, you know, they're probably in your position that you was in 10 years ago or whatever because they're like younger or whatever and yeah. they won't know wh- what steps to take. They might even think that selling their business is like they're never going to do it because that's what yeah. we were like while you were yeah, like yeah, at the uh, very uh, beginning. Yeah. But when I was 20, if someone said, I remember saying, <laughs> yeah. I remember saying, nah, I'm, I'm never, never selling. selling. I'm yeah. never selling. But and like, that's why when you told me, you. I was like, what? Remember when you said you was never selling? And so now <laughs> at, at this present day, 2024, you've still got 10%. Yeah. Still a shareholder and everything. Yeah. Which, sorry to cut you, is, was super important because, you know, if I'm going to stay up, like I agreed to stay on as the founder and I just wanted invested interest. And I just think that, you know, like I, I wake up and I'm like, yeah, 10%. I've still got my purpose. Yeah. I still go to the office. I get involved in certain projects. You know, I don't, I don't like the team, they get on with all the day to day. Um, if they need me or if they want my opinion on something, that's just kind of how we work. Um, but just having that intre- invested interest, especially when it was my baby, that does mean yeah. a lot to me. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So Do I've you still ever got think that. you're just hang up the boots completely and say there's a 10% and completely remove yourself from Hood Rich? Um, do you know what? Because I sold 40%, I'd like to say, and I didn't think I was going to sell 40%, I'd like to say, who who knows? Part of me knows that Hood Rich has got the potential to be a huge company, so mm-hmm. I want to keep 10%. Yeah. Um, and also you want to yeah. grow, you still want to grow. You still want to have your, brand. Brand. Yeah. yeah. I think, Selling 40% was enough. I think I'll, You're I think I'll, yeah. because for example, when people sell, they then have um, capital, which they look to invest. Mm-hmm. So I just looked at it as like, that is your investment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that is my investment. And I just, yeah. What would you say are some of the biggest hurdles that shocked you to this day, having the brand 10 years or whatever, what were some of the biggest hurdles that really took you back? I think back in the day when I didn't have a lot of money, spending a lot of money on um, getting things manufactured overseas, and then they came and they were wrong. Um, that must I, have been I think, such yeah, a kick in the teeth. I remember you took the foot. Fo- like, basically, I ordered... This was separate <clears throat> to the um, spelling mistake. 
I ordered uh, some jackets and I remember putting the hoods on and the hoods, I couldn't get my head through the... Um, oh my gosh, yes. No, and I've got a picture no. of that. Yeah, yeah, couldn't, yeah, get, couldn't get my And the shape of the hoods was all off. So I think... I mean, he can't fit your head through it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, come on, like, how... Like, Forcing it. <laughs> how tight yeah. have you made the hole that you can't get your head through? Um, so so yeah. those are some of your biggest, like... <clears throat> hurdles that you really had to yeah i think when i think back i think the hardest thing you know is building a team and people mm -hmm. that is hands down the hardest and people. it still is to this still day is. one of the hardest like, things I'll, i've got a lot like, of running joke and i just say you know having a team and pulling up to the office every day is, is a bit like what's going to happen on today's episode of eastenders yeah. Like because Ooh, the drama. Yeah. I feel like there's always Yeah, something. there is. There's always Yeah, running a team running teams of people in companies. Yeah. You, it's hard. There's so many different characters in the, in the like, room. Everyone's like not everyone different. Everyone thinks the same. Yeah. You've got emotions in there. Maybe yeah. if you've got ladies and their hormones. Females, males, exactly. Yeah. Hoodrich so, yeah, is yeah. is predominantly females, isn't it? In it, the team. It's crazy because it never started like that. It was predominantly yeah. because males. The best. Yeah. And we make the best. We run the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like, again, I'm, I'm blessed to have a really good team and really passionate people. And they always say, like, whenever I speak to people who run businesses, especially successful businesses, they're always like, hire people better than you. Yeah. Always yeah. hire people that have better skill sets in that area as you and would do a better job than you. And I think that's so key. Yeah, you will not succeed thinking that you'll be able to do everything. Yeah. Like, that, no. that is just impossible. Yeah. One thing that's just a fact is Hoodrich has been way bigger than me from years, years ago. ago. Like, like in terms of, <laughs> yeah, like the people that are involved, they just know a lot more about their field than yeah. me and they're a lot more knowledgeable. Because I still get the question now, does Jay do the designs? Like, does that does Jay design? And I'm like, no, he never has I've ever sat at a computer and designed because he's not a designer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was just the with vision. a designer, it was it yeah. was mm. his vision. Mm. And that's something to like kind of clear up. Yeah, I yeah, I'm not a designer. Haven't sat. I can't use Photoshop. Can't use yeah. Adobe. What all the team yeah. use. I've never even attempted it. But that's because I understand where my skill set is and what I'm good at mm -hmm. and not trying to like um, be a jack of all mm -hmm. trades. I just had a thought, just like, just so random, thinking back to the takeover event she did. Sorry, I'm jumping way back. Yeah, it's cool. Especially as we move into summer. Would you ever bring them back? I was speaking to the team. They're planning quite a few things, but yeah, an event party is- Yeah, um, it is a big So you'll should... get an invite, Luce. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> I'm gonna be there. <laughs> no, but I do think, especially for brands that have such a creative edge to them, the, and it enables to bring the brand to life even more. Like I said, not necessarily your competitors, but brands that are similar to you that do those. And I see the footage and I'm like, yeah, like yeah. that just looks wicked. Like, yeah. I don't know. I was just thinking, would you do one yeah. of those? It was just I like think that's de head. definitely something that the team are working on. Yeah. And we've done, we have done like different events. Like we did that um, Hoops in the Hood. That was in collaboration with Yeah, I saw that. Jamie. I knew a lot of that people involved in that, obviously, because I used to That was so good. That was sick. So more stuff like that, more stuff like that internationally. That was more for, like, the kids yeah. and, like, I was loving it. And do you, do you know one thing as well, like, where it's got to, which always kind of um, I am taken back by is, for example, I don't have any involvement and stuff like that. So I'll just go into the office and I'll just get an update, like, this is what we're doing. This is the plan. <laughs> And it's like, that is so sick. Like, I love the fact that I've got the brand to a stage where the people there, they understand the vision. Mm -hmm. And I don't have involvement in it. And I just get presented what we're doing. And I'm like, a lot Love it. Cool. Yeah. So that just That's shows. when you know it's all in the right place. Yeah. yeah. And um, but the setback, well, it wasn't really setback, but when you went to the event with Chip. Me and my brother, actually, we went to London. There was a lot of boys, Chip video shoot. And I was just there, I had product with me. Cause back then I was like hustling, just trying to get product on, you know, um, whoever I could. And there was a guy, he was from London and he was on the PR scene, um, like doing PR or whatever. And I remember speaking to him about, you know, how can I 
get the brand out there? How can I get more exposure? I was speaking to him like, I might want to go into stores. And he turned around to me and he said, you know, um, you won't get into stores with Hoodrich because Hood's negative. You need to abbreviate Hoodrich. Um, I just remember thinking, okay, all right, cool. Um, I never listened to him. But <laughs> God, <laughs> that. Like, okay, cool. I never listened to him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like me and my brother speak about it all the time. Like he says, like, Jay, you could have, you know, that could have knocked your confidence. You could have actually Done abbreviated yeah. the word. Imagine. And, do you know what I mean? And I think that... Like, I didn't change anything and I've, pr I've proven to myself and to people that, like, are listening or outsiders that, you know, Hoodrich went into, like, mainstream stores without having to, you know, change. change. Yeah, um, change. And I always say, like, I always have said to, from the beginning, I think the name of the brand is incredible. Yeah. I think it's got so much meaning and yeah. context yeah. behind it without having to say yeah. anything. It's just... I've always said it, haven't yeah, I? It's yeah, just, always. You thought of an absolute we, gem. We, when you first thought of that name, we were like, wow, how has nobody used this name? Mm -hmm. Or like, tr trademark. We were like, what? Like, this is a gem. Literally. Have to trademark it straight away. So, um, I already alluded to it earlier, but kind of like the relationship and the dynamic between Jay and Brooke um, and the success of Hoodrich. So, you guys almost went on the back foot to put Hoodrich first. Mm. What did those sacrifices look like? Paint the picture for maybe any dreamers or whoever um, listening in this position. I don't think we had any like major sacrifices. I think earlier on in our relationship, I think it was pretty much just we couldn't do what normal couples would have done mm. at the beginning. So like traveling much, like we didn't go on our first holiday until like four years into our relationship. Well. Just us two. Obviously we went, I went like a, on a family holiday, went on a family holiday with your mom and dad. Um, but just us, like away, just me and Jay, we didn't do our first holiday together until my 21st birthday, and that was a surprise for mm -hmm. me. Um, so they're, they're the kind of things that I'd say we sacrificed early on just because you were so focused and just pushing the brand and investing all your money into that. And just like... As I've, well, like work for it, me. and Yeah, all that sort of stuff. And just sacrifice, like living that like lifestyle. Yeah. That's what you see on like Instagram now. So... It, it, it never started like that. Um, you know, our friends was going away. We missed out on yeah, and a, a lot couple of, of like them Dubai trips, man. And I never forget. I remember thinking, yo, everyone's going two years in a row. We we couldn't go. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just just that's... and then into perspective. Sorry, I just think this is yeah. so cool. From like then to now, from nothing to something. Yeah. Um. You know, there's two years where everyone was going to Dubai and you couldn't afford it. But on your 30th birthday, you took everybody, everybody to, Dubai to Dubai and you covered it. And I think that is just <laughs> yeah. like so Lovely, cool. Yeah. Like you remained Lovely. humble. And you said in the in the week you were like, I didn't want to go to Dubai because then I was on the back foot financially. You felt like you were going to be behind with work. You'd have to come home and play catch up both financially and work wise. Mm -hmm. And you just wouldn't wasn't prepared to yeah. do that. Yeah. And I think in the age that you guys are at, where everybody is in couples, having fun, like going on these holidays, the whole friendship group and you were just yeah. like no remaining focused again i think for people listening it's discipline like yeah definitely and being so disciplined with your work yeah. ethic and thoughts because you could have gone yeah we could, yeah it, definitely but it would have well, been yeah, like been more but that setback. is just you've yeah. got to you've got to choose like do you yeah. want to live do you want to live that lifestyle now and then set you back in business or do you want to get do yeah. you want to focus on your business so then later on give it a couple of years five years you're all right, but you're fine. that's what I'm saying. But what helped me was obviously Brooke wasn't putting any pressure on me. Do you know what I mean? I feel like sometimes females can put like pressure on their man or, you know, just hint or, you know, compare their mm. relationship to other couples. Mm. So there was none of that. I didn't have to go through that. So it was just literally and us two just locking in. I think that was more so as well, like just because I was there from the beginning of, Hoodrich before it even started like I understood what it it was taking and because I was pretty much involved I knew how hard he had to work on it so I knew it wasn't possible most of the time and I knew there had to be sacrifices so I think I was just yeah even both of us I don't think yeah I think we were fine I at the time we, we probably major. didn't think any anything of it it's just yeah, like, like we can't go cool can't do can't this go. can't do that yeah. I also missed out on 
loads of like lads holidays yeah couldn't go um but it is what it is man it's just like but i think that's a huge message right mm-hmm. i think that's a huge message probably oh, yeah. more than you think it is and you, when we were um speaking in the week you were saying and you looked in the camera you probably will do it again i don't want to tell you this but you were like don't get caught up on you know people on instagram when you see the flexes and the watches yeah you were like you actually never know oh, yeah. if that's like rented or borrowed and you never know the meaning yeah. behind it and you've always never you've always said like i'm never gonna get ahead of myself like yeah. i don't care yeah. if i was driving the most beat up car yeah. i don't care if i didn't yeah have- and we loved we loved that stuff back then like yeah. we we'd always like we had friends around us that had nice things as well and you know like ladies cars and all that kind of stuff and we were just like that stuff is nice and one day that will be us but it, it's just not we, we understood that it just wasn't them yeah and we had to work our way up and like my little cousins they was in the office the other day and i was telling them that i didn't have my first um designer clothing or piece till i was 25 years old had no designer before that now there's probably people listening that are younger than 25 they might own a designer t-shirt bag or anything i was literally and do you know what? That was um, my first thing that I bought was like a, a Louis side bag. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And not to say that you couldn't have treated yourself to one because we definitely, like in my position, I could have in you, your position, yeah. you could have, but it was just your priorities, like just getting your priorities in order and just investing that money into something Owls. that's more worthwhile and yeah. is going to make an impact on your future in a positive way whereas buying designer before you've even thought about doing something for your business or working on yourself or getting a good job not always just about having your own business even like scaling up in like mm-hmm. a nine to five mm-hmm. or in, getting in that position context. could be anything yeah such an important message because i yeah. think i think a lot of um people maybe even our age are mm-hmm. still lost in that and yeah. definitely people younger who are unfortunately now we're all consumed by social media in this generation yeah. i think it's such a huge message because a lot of people get lost in it yeah. and they have nothing really yeah yeah definitely i think you know everything we see on social media is not real you got to be able to kind of take everything with a pinch of salt mm-hmm. um you see people with nice like cars watches houses like there's so much cap on the internet like people could have borrowed watches could have borrowed Mm -hmm. jewelry Mm -hmm. um could have rented cars so just you know take it with a pinch of salt not everything's made out to focus on the bigger things (laughs) and to people watching this podcast jay just kind of as i say are a dreamer and would love to follow in your footsteps not necessarily doesn't have to be a streetwear brand it could be anything What's like one piece of advice that you would look down the camera and tell them that you think is the most important to you? One piece of advice is a little bit difficult, but I think... Or or like a Yeah, I a just mixture. think... <laughs> I think success starts in the mind. So I think you need to work on your mindset, how you think. Get rid of a victim mentality and, you know, understand that if you have a victim mentality, it's not going to do anything for you. Um, understand that to become successful is going to take, you know, a lot of things, hard work, discipline, dedication, sacrifice. All those things are cliche, um, but but it is real. Um, and that's what it takes. But yeah, I just think that this generation has a lot of um, victim, like they have a victim mentality. And I just think that you won't be successful with that. So you need to stop saying, oh, like, why am I, why can't I do something? Stop saying what that you can't do something and start thinking of ways of how you can um, just change the way you think. Yeah. And what would you say, Brooklyn, just from someone who has ridden the wave for 10 plus years and has been not only super involved, but also able to watch from like more of a bird's eye, bird's eye view? I feel like, I feel like patience is a very key trait element yeah Yeah. element um to have so i think definitely being patient and communication is also a big thing because in like our relationship as well there'd be times where we've had to speak on communication because jay would be out working and understand why he'd be out working in the office till late but it's also like just pick up the phone and 
you know, just communicate that so then I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. I've got better. <laughs> no dream or goal is ever too big. And that was oh, um, yeah. coming back to your mood board that you had and that oh, you yeah, created yeah, yeah. Um, in the early stages of business. You just obviously create this mood board and everything on there now. We looked back, fast forward, like how many years ago was that? Like probably like six, seven yeah, years. Yeah, I made that. Fast forward now to this day, it's like you've ticked everything off that mood board. And that's and it actually takes, crazy. It's taken you seven years to achieve everything. those big dreams. And at that time to us, when we was looking at that mood board, we were like, wow, like. They're big dreams. They're big dreams. And maybe it will never happen or maybe it will. We don't know, but it mm. has. And it's like, you just have to continue at it and keep going. That's the power of the subconscious mind. Yeah. I do feel like everything that I've got or achieved, I've attracted mm-hmm. subconsciously. Mm. Yeah. You um, always knew what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Including <laughs> Missy here. Oh, <laughs> so that's so nice. <laughs> well, I think even from the last podcast that we did in the week, And this one, I think your story is incredible. I think it will empower a lot of people. I think your humbleness and your like um, dedication to your work Mm -hmm. is something that lacks in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important. Mm. I think everything nowadays seems achievable overnight. People look for that overnight success. It exists sometimes, but more time it takes the hard work. And I think your story shows just that. So first of all, congratulations on all your success and all your hard work (laughs) and what you created for you and your family, for the city, for the UK. It's absolutely incredible. And as I always say, he's so humble. I don't even think he realizes sometimes. Yeah, he doesn't. What he's He's done. (laughs) We're all so proud of you. Thank you for coming on this podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you for sharing your story. (laughs) I know you're a very private person and I know you haven't really ever shared too much, but as you are now in this new stage of business and this new stage of life, I hope to see a lot more of you. And I hope to see you sharing your story elsewhere with different people. If you've made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Brooklyn, as well, for coming thank along. You, Not coming along. Me. I don't like that I've just said that because you haven't just come along. You are <laughs> actually a huge part of this story, this brand, and this success. And I think it's beautiful that you also have this incredible, romantic, gorgeous relationship as well. I think it's oh, literally like um, the fairy tale. Mm. So, yes, if you guys have any questions or you maybe want to know a little bit more, please pop any comments in the box below or DM me. I can always put something together and hopefully send it over to Jay and I'm sure he will get back and I can respond to you. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe, whatever you can do to support the cause. And we will be back next week with another episode. So thank you so much. Take care. Bye.